In 2020, a few months after COVID really hit the United States, I was staying in more. I was scared to go out, being scared to step foot in the city that I grew up in and know and love feels so at odds with everything that I'm used to, with my whole experience. New York City prides itself in being so diverse, so welcoming. For the first time ever, I felt like I did not belong. I'm Carolyn Kang. I am a native New Yorker. I'm an actor, writer, producer, and activist. So every morning I get up and I make some coffee and sit out on my patio just so that I can sort of center myself with everything that's been going on this past year with COVID and the surge of hate crimes. Um, I really did feel like having a routine was something that grounded me when I'm feeling really anxious. I think self-care is radical for people of color, especially women of color. You know the saying that you should always put on your own oxygen mask before um, helping others? That's exactly how we, that's exactly how I feel is you have to take care of yourself before you take on the world. To me, code switching is when you change something about yourself, whether it's the way you talk or your physical appearance or anything that allows you to either fit in or to be perceived a different way. Nowadays, I do code switch when I'm out in the world because of the state that we're in with the surge in anti-Asian hate crimes. It's protecting me from violence, from, from racialized violence, from sexualized violence, and code switching is a coat of arms that's protecting me from a world right now. months after COVID really hit the United States. I was riding on the train that I take all the time. And I was sitting in a car that was mostly empty. There might have been one other person there. And a man suddenly came out and started lunging at me, gesturing very aggressively and violently, and started screaming in my face telling me that Chinese people were ruining this country, that we were to blame for the pandemic. I felt extremely threatened in that moment. I was honestly worried that he was going to hit me or pull out a knife. After that, you know, there was a lot of feelings of fear and walking down the street, I was much more aware of my surroundings. I would start covering my face with wearing a hat, sunglasses, mask, just to conceal my identity. No one could tell that I was Asian and my race it was just one less thing to worry about, kind of. The mental shift for me honestly came from sort of the desperation after the Atlanta shooting. It was a case of life and death. At that point, it felt that way at least. Things were brewing. Myself and my friends had experienced these incidents and they're not isolated. But when it finally, the media is paying attention, when we finally have people covering um, these attacks, and it's not just on local, you know, Asian interest news, but on a national scale, because of the severity of the attack, I knew it was time. An actress and producer is giving out free safety alarms in an effort to help protect fellow Asian New Yorkers from hate crimes. Carolyn Kang, who grew up in New York, says these alarms she's holding there in her hand comes with a flashlight and emits a loud sound. 
I decided to start a fundraiser to give away these safety alarms, prioritizing women, the elderly, and LGBTQ folks. I started getting a lot of traction, shares on social media. I reached out, of course, to try to get donations to different influencers, authors. News outlets reached out with interviews, and that really, really helped get the, the word out. When I launched this fundraiser and this initiative, of course I was in the public, right? But I was proud to do that because it was for my community. And I had no hesitation about it. So since starting the fundraiser, I've received hundreds of requests from different people all across the city, and here are some of them. I'd love to request a safety alarm for myself and my mom. She was attacked near a subway entrance. I'm a nurse and have been verbally attacked and blamed for COVID last summer. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, I've experienced a couple of instances. People have come up to me and my mother and verbally harassed us phrases like Chinese virus or gook. This is really what keeps me going. Um, there's one girl who reached out to me after I sent her and her mom some alarms. She said, huge thanks to you for sending these free safety alarms to me and my mom. We feel more safe carrying these around the city we were born and raised in. Even just hearing that one person would have been enough, honestly. I just started a production company with my creative partner, Mia, and we are producing our first narrative short. We're both passionate about gender equality, reproductive rights, and telling authentic stories. We decided creating our own work was the best avenue to do so. I forwarded you the email from Kylie. Mm -hmm. It's the new newsletter. Great. It's going to be the first one of our crowdfunding campaign, and I just want to make sure that the verbiage is... Wait, this looks so beautiful. Hi, friend. Mia here. <laughs> Have you heard about the orgasm gap? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, this is obviously like the first thing we're making. The rest of the projects that we do have down the pipeline, the one about endometriosis. Yeah, that's going to um, be an important one. Reproductive rights, obviously a huge, huge issue that we are super passionate about. I know. And just, I think, you know, we're focusing a lot about not just female empowerment, but also gender equality in general. Growing up, I didn't see people who looked like me on television. And if they were, they were either the butt of a racist joke or they were white people in yellow face. That's why representation means so much, why it is so important. For a long time, the Asian American community has try to quietly not make a sound in this country. As unfortunate as this time has been, I think it is crucial because it's shown us as Asian Americans, we can take up space in this country. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to have a voice. We all have a voice and we belong.